and welcome to another week in our garden. Now we've had quite a lot of rain this week, not particularly heavy rain, but a lot of constant rain. So the garden's looking quite good. So we thought this week, it's far too wet to go on it, but we'll just start from one greenhouse to the other greenhouse and show you how things have altered in the garden and how things are growing. So we're going to start in the top greenhouse. This is the one that we keep some of the tomatoes in, definitely cucumbers, and if you remember, some yellow peppers. We were just looking and something's eating a few holes in the in the leaves, it's going for the new leaves. So tonight, I'll probably have a walk in tonight with a torch when it's dark and see what's having a nibble. They really are setting too. It's got to be a caterpillar type or even a slug. Could even be earwigs. Now tomatoes are setting, as you can see, we're getting quite a few. A little bit concerned that the stems are a little bit on the thin side and also I'm having to come in here every two days to take the side shoots off this I can see one on that one that's missed but when I water this evening I'll take those off cucumbers doing very well they've really 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 shot up I have top the pots up, I put some chalk on them and I've topped them up with some compost now. It took about another oh maybe five litres of compost to fill them up. But we have as you can see we've got some nice cucumbers coming now. I'll give that one three days that'll be ready. Loads on this one as well come in. They're doing very well and quite pleased with them. Now all the rest of the tomatoes are looking well, the colour of the leaf is alright, apart from something nibbling at the peppers, the greenhouse is doing fine, so we'll, we'll just try and keep it as warm as we can. And I actually had to shut the door on the vents yesterday, it was quite cold. Try and keep them warm, keep them growing, they'll be fine. Now we'll have a, a little de garden. Now just a quick look round the bottom greenhouse, this is the one with the peppers and the aubergines in. They really are growing away now. We did have a little bit of aphid and I sprayed them with some horticultural soap and it seems to be clean now. Obviously with having the windows open all day, you will get aphid come in and out. So I'm expecting another, another batch, but I'll keep my eye on it and it's no problem. Some of them are now getting a bit of size on them, so I'll have to come in and I'll probably put two more stakes in because they're breaking naturally and they'll just support the tops. The other thing is now that they're getting bigger, we will need to space them out a little. Not immediately, but soon, very soon. Everything else is fine. Temperature today is 21.3 Celsius. Not bad for an overcast day. But we'll go out and show you what we've been up to and what we've gotten. Now we're back outside the bottom greenhouse. This little square here is where I put everything I had left in, all the odds and bits. So there's several different varieties in there. There's peppers, tomatoes, all sorts in there. But well, rather than waste them, I thought i will put them in and see how they do. Now we'll just show you the rhubarb. This is after I did a pick and then I cleaned all the underside of the rhubarb off and it's actually showing lots of new leaves already. The bit of rain that we did get would have done it the world of good as well. 
this is the salad net now I've had trouble trying to get some celeriac going I've actually kept this as the third set these are celeriac here that's the third set and that's about the best I've had them this year up to now the next lot of onions are in there the they're pulling onions and they're guardsmen and then there's a few beetroot which is bolt hardy this end there's another batch of radishes they've only been set two days they're just breaking the surface little gem lettuce that are coming up nicely some snowball turnips making a lot of top and they're just beginning to swell underneath this is radish sparkly as you can see that's ready now so they can be pulled and then we have the leeks that we're going to try they're salad leeks we'll see how we go on with those and then if they're anything like we'll set some more and those are the guardsman onions they'll be ready well some are ready now so a couple of days they'll be ready in this tunnel there's a few calibres doing very well ready for weeding with the looks of it and in the far end I set some Chinese cabbage it's all run to seed with that hot weather we've had so I should pull one up and see how the chickens get on with it and if uh, if they do eat it then I shall pull on a regular every day until the vet them cauliflowers ready for weeding I lost two in the middle but that's the way it is with this hot weather I should take the cover off and get them hoed and weeded these are the mini coal cabbages they'll be ready in about a week to use in coleslaws and etc they're various sizes so they will keep going for quite a bit of time looking well the broad beans are coming well now what I should do now and any time now now we've got the tops as far up as this you need to come and take the tops out I can't see any to show you yet but the black fly won't be long getting into these tops so if you just go along and just take them off like that just go down the line and then there'll be enough in there for the black flies to get on and it'll encourage them to get those uh, beans ready that's all you do you just go along the whole line set tops out and you shouldn't get black fly you might get a little bit say down here if you get them down here then obviously if you see them take it off down there and take that away but they're doing all right the sweet corns going from strength to strength I don't know if you remember when we planted that it really is taking off well We've got one or two weeds in even come up in here look that I still have to but it's a bit too sticky underfoot to get on it so when it dries out a bit I'll have a blitz and I'll go from one end to the other and take out every weed. This is the beetroot plot as you can see they've done very very well. It's been a good year for me with beetroot it really is we've had a really good set a good take and as you can see the plants are doing wonderful the row down the centre is that one where I just pinched a few seed into gaps and when they get to about golf ball size or maybe a bit less we'll take those as baby beetroot the other ones at the far side they're bolt hardy they'll get quite big I see there's one or two nearly ready for pulling don't let them get too big because they will go a bit woody and these at this end they're the cylinder ones which will be a bit longer for us but even them 
looking through at the roots they're doing very well and this rain would have done them the world ago in this next tunnel which is the high tunnel you've got all the brussels sprouts they're really pulling away now with this bit of rain they'll soon be touching the top of the net we've also got in here a catch crop of lolo rossa lettuce doing very well very clean this is the onion bed they're standing very well and I keep looking at them because I'm still finding some I'm still finding some that have grown totally round there's one over there that I'll show you what I have to do I'm still finding these that are growing and with a full circle of uh, leaf that actually encased the whole can you see that where it's encased the whole of the onion can you see how that's light coloured because that's had its case and it. I don't know why and that is actually a red barren so I've never come across that before but I'll keep if I see with them I release them and they soon pick up see this one here added but it's picked up fine another thing with the onion crop I'm finding a lot with that have gone to seed now the ones that have gone to seed are the actual heat treated ones that we got free there's no plants on on the side that was grown from seed and yet on this row which was all heat treated that shouldn't go to seed I've got one two I've got three so what I should do when I'm hoeing I shall actually take those out I'm not going to leave them in this waste of time this is the row of parsnips I put two rows in but as you can see, I've had a mole gone round and they really have been a nuisance this year, the moles. And I think they'll probably get a bit worse now we've had some rain. But it's actually gone down the row of the parsnips and with it loosening the soil, they've dried out and they've died. But all I can do is try and press it back down again but never mind the beetroot had a few left so I just popped them in there there's a couple of bits a couple of spaces but I've got a few more spares in that uh, net with the salad so I'll just fill those up and what's left I'll just put another row in there's, there's a few carrots come up but not nothing like they're supposed to come up so I'm going to put some pots on there to grow the carrots in but I'll show you those when we get up to the shed this is the tomato bed now these are the plum tomatoes it's, except for the back row which I filled with another variety as you can see the setting we're getting some nice plum shapes on them now if you can remember I was a bit concerned about the tomatoes looking a bit yellow I didn't know whether it was the sun or a magnesium deficiency so I gave them a spray over and a dose at the root of Epsom salt and it seems to have done the trick whether it was one or the other I don't know but they're actually coming through and they're looking a lot greener they're setting they're definitely growing I'm having to tie them in every few days so they've come back nicely also I've planted marigolds in between every tomato that we've got and a little the ones we have left I've planted down the rows as well so the insects will like that and also hopefully 
keep the aphid off. These are the leeks, I don't know if you can see them through the net that we popped in last week, really taking off now, standing proud. I've done nothing to them and they're doing, they're doing nicely. These are the pumpkins and squashes that we set. I lost the couple with slugs but this um, replanted them so but now we're looking like we're going to have a good set I might just have to grow them in a circle though I keep looking at them but it looks like they're going to set off these are the beans cocoa de pampo I think I lost one set in the middle but that was again down to the slugs but the rest are okay now the cold rab is doing all right. It was a bit iffy at first, but it's taking off now. So hopefully we'll have a little bit of cold rabby. This side of the frame, we have some butternut squashes. They're really dragging the feet a bit, but I'm hoping this rain would have perked them up and we might just get a bit more growth out of them. Three plants here are the yellow courgettes. They're doing fine, look there. They're really biting down now. The celery has really loved that bit of rain. Now through that very hot weather, I was putting a sheet over the top, as you can see at the back there. I keep it there and if it gets a really hot day, I cover them because they do tend to burn the leaves if the sun's too strong. These tomatoes here, these are all the blight resistant tomatoes. I have got names on the lines so we'll know what varieties they are. Like I think this one, that one's Mountain Magic, those down there. The other one's a Cocktail Crush, two rows of Cocktail Crush. This row is Mountain Magic and it goes down so there's two rows of Mountain Magic there. They look well. Now these are the garlic, I'm afraid they've got a terrible, terrible attack of rust. So this year when we harvest them, all these tops will have to be burnt and we won't be able to keep any of the cloves this year. For next year we'll have to get new cloves in because you can't take cloves through that have had that much rust on them. It's not worth it. There's a few scapes on them. They'll be fine. I think my neighbour will probably fetch those. She, she likes those. These are the dwarf beans. They're the yellow ones. And they're coming down quite nicely. They were suffering with the heat. But now they've had a drop of rain, I'm hoping to see them come up. These are the purple potted peas. Now, they really have taken off suddenly and they're growing through the bird net. So I'll have to spend a bit of time, take them off the bird net, put them on the climbing net inside. And I might just take the bird net off because it's... Uh, it's causing a bit of problem there. These are the peas and the beans. These with the flowers on this side are mine too. This side is alderman. They're just coming into flower now. Then the alderman goes down to there. Now, the alderman peas come down to here. Then you've got the lot of beans on that side. Cobra on that side and then the Mons 2 starts here and goes up there. All doing very well. They've got a good size on them now. And again, that rain would have done wonders in here. The potatoes are standing well now. Again, that bit of rain would have done this well. I was actually putting the irrigator on these because they were really suffering with the heat. The tops are beginning to, to drop. But now they're looking well now. Remember though, we've had some 
wet weather and when it gets warm again we're going to get some blight warnings I'm sure of it. If the wind keeps blowing through them and with them space it out a little bit more than normal we might get away with it but we'll see. Now we've come into the fruit cage as you can see the strawberries are coming on very well these are the early varieties just here we have picked some and we'll be picking every day now especially when it gets a little warmer and they're very very sweet this year I don't know if it's the weather but they're very very nice straw the end row are the later ones but they've started producing now so there might be a tight follower on the raspberries these are the primer cane that means that they grow up fruit this year and then we cut them down at the end of the year so rather than tying them up all the time and then cut them down and then cut all the string off I've actually put this well it, it's another rail on that side and I'm letting the raspberries come up the center and I'll just show you what to do can you see where these have pushed the way out a little bit I literally just push them back in and let them all come up the center and it saves me time tying them up they will get right up here so keep them in and I've put strings on to stop them blowing about once they're inside the cage. But here you see, just keep them pushed in. It's easier to do that than tie them on. We'll see if it works or not. This row here is strawberries that we moved from over there. It was a little bit tight over there so we spread them out and that's going to crop for its first year this year. These are the early fruit in raspberries and the raspberries from last year we've tied up and left over winter. They're the ones that are going to fruit and then these canes are next year's canes that we just tie in because once we've harvested these canes we'll cut those old canes off and let the new canes tie in. So hopefully I'll have two neat rows of tied in canes you will have to tie these in because they're overwintering they'll be blowing about all over but we'll see how we go we'll see how we go with doing it this way but they're definitely getting a lot of them so we've got to do something we've got to spread them out a little but if we take half this way and half that way after we've harvested we might finish up with a double row instead of a single row of raspberries, early raspberries, which we're rather fond of, aren't we? Do notice that the raspberry beetle trap is up with the pheromone in. I don't know if there's anything in it yet. There's a few, there's a few in there, one, two, three, four. There's five in there, so they are about. I don't know if you can see them. Can you see them? Mm. So that's five we've got. But hopefully there'll be more than that because we don't want the we don't want them on the raspberries. So that just sits there nicely. The pheromones in the top that attracts them to it, and then the four down into the water at the bottom that's got a little bit of uh, vegetable oil in it as well to stop them taking off again. When we put this mesh onto the uh, fruit case I was a little bit worried whether the bees would get in or not and I don't know if you can see them now there was there was four bees here just now so I'm quite happy that they're getting in and out. Here's one look, there you go. So the bees are still getting in and out even with this uh, half inch mesh which I'm pleased about. The current bushes are doing very very well, the berries are swelling now. This one is a, an older bush 
that I cut back so I could revigorate it if you like but all the new growth was not flat in the rain but gooseberries are doing very well I had a little bit of aphid on the gooseberries and on the currants and I was waiting 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 and then suddenly the ladybirds and hoverflies started appearing so I just left them and all right there's a scruffy leaf or two on them but the aphids are now being controlled by the predators which I'm very very pleased about. the blackberry is doing very very well as you can see it's actually escaping now so I'll have to pull that back in there next year's canes which we do the same as what we do on those raspberries we tie those in onto this side when we finish cropping so well that's next year's crop and all this once we've cropped it we'll cut off the fruit this side is all doing well as you can see loads of gooseberries the blueberries this year with us having a lot of late frosts which it was nearly every night for a month I was worried that they weren't going to make it but they really have beat the odds and we've got quite a few berries on them not as many as I would have liked like this one here the frost took all the flowers off that one right down there's a, quite a few like that but saying that we will have some blueberries so I'm quite pleased that how well it's done on very bad conditions Gemma our daughter rung me and says I've got some big pots if you want them well I was thinking like 10 litres but I always want big pots I says yes I'll have them and so she brought them and there they are look there this one's 130 litres and those two are 90 litres now these I'll use for growing the carrots this year we'll take them down to where that frame is it's a good job it's Father's Day and I can ask for compost for my Father's Day present because that's a lot of compost to fill those just to show that two of the hens are, are come off broody and they've come round to say hello to you while we're around here lovely old girls aren't you now the other thing I need to do this week I'm looking up because the grapevine has now set its fruit the grapevine has put its flowers on as you see and they'll be setting but now I need to get rid of some of this canopy if you leave them now what I shall do is if you can see that the fruit is going to be there so I should just cut it off there because you can't do with all this this will go on for yards and yards if you leave it instead of all the goodness going up the stem the goodness will go into the grapes itself now it's quite a job to cut all the vine but it's well worth it it takes a little bit of patience and standing on the ladder I'll show you next week new growth and with it being near to the root this will grow for oh yards so we need to cut them back so the energy goes into fruit not into these canes the other vine we planted was the green one seedless it's doing fine I'm not obviously not going to let it fruit for another season or so but it put on a lot of early growth but I cut it back quite hard look and now it's putting on new growth again I'm more interested at the new growth up there than here so if it starts taking off I'll cut them off and send the energy up now you saw the lettuce down there and this is the next set these are the follow-up batches for the lettuce remember you need to set every two or three weeks to keep the lettuce going through even if you get too many you can't go wrong with it these here 
are another set of the Solaria. This is how bad the, it's been this year. I just cannot get it to grow. But we'll get there. We will get some Solaria at some stage. The little gem and these two trays are Lola Rossa. These are the few that I've just had left over from, from the potting up. And if any decide they're not going to be with us, I can just take one of those and pop it in. There's the other end that's come out of broody. Now, what they'll do now is they'll have a malt and then they'll, in a few weeks they'll start laying again, hopefully. That's it for this week. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, my little walk down the garden. Let's call it the Tour de Garden. So you've seen what we've got. Right, next week I'll show you the grapes trimmed and we need to start looking, believe it or not, at winter brassicas. So we need to get some cedar, some red cabbage and some winter cauliflowers, some broccoli all sorts we need to put those in now and then next month well we're all right for a bit for next month let's get the winter brassicas in next and next month we put the potatoes in for christmas so if you're going to do that you want to be looking to get some seed now it's quite expensive this year but it'd be well worth it so that'll be it for this week Thank you for watching. Many, many thanks for subscribing. Take care, everyone, and we'll see you next week. Bye now.